Okay, Breaker Broke 23, so today I'm starting a neat little project down here in the shop and I'm building a end table for my daughter's upcoming birthday. So what I did is I got a nice piece of uh, plywood here and I cut up some cedar. This is all from my property and um, I've, uh, I'm going to make my border here. And then what I'm going to do is inlay a piece of wood from this slab here and this slab is from our property as well we milled this out with an Alaskan sawmill so let's get started okay so I've got the base all jigged up and glued together so that's gonna be pretty nice we'll get ready to sand all the edges and stuff it's been a long time since I've done 45 so I'm gonna have to work on those but that's all right Okay, I think this is going to be the piece I'm going to use. I'm going to play around with it a little bit, see how I can get it. I really wanted to show off what I call the broomstick handle. But uh, that's going to be beautiful. See, and it's going away. I'm getting into the, to the meat of it now. But uh, the ants did a nice job on this piece of wood, didn't they? Got some good cedar shavings. Oh, yeah. But there you go. Right? Before, after. If I screw this piece up here, I've got some more to play with. Actually, I have several of these planks, but I love that end cut right there. So, on to the next step. Okay, so as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that I'm going to try, because I need this a little bit wider. I think what I'm going to try to do is plane this down and snap this off, maybe cut down here, cut down here, then my border will be right there, and I'll have more of the ant burrowed wood. So, let's see what happens. Yeah, I think that's maybe what we're going to do. Okay, so I took the two pieces that I, uh, cut from the main slab and put those through the thickness planer got them to the desired thickness and if you remember in that last shot we had this one big piece that I was going to use and I wanted I wanted more action going on here so I milled down another piece pieces off that, cut this off of here, and put them together. Now, I don't know if it's my planer or just the way the wood went. The These are both set at the same depth, but there's a little seam, and that's okay, because I'll, I'll sand this down a little bit when I mount it into the tabletop. But I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like in the tabletop. Okay, so that's what it looks like in the tabletop. And I think that's going to be beauteous. That's what I want. More action in here. Um, the other way, I would have had nice, you know, nice wood here on the sides, but I believe too much. I wanted to really show off these beautiful marks that the ants left. So, the carpenter ant apparently likes to make home in the cedar logs. And they say they don't eat the wood. They're just basically um, excavating it or tunneling it out. And then you'll see like a big, you know, pile of uh, sawdust type remains left over. And those were actually some of the trees we looked for when we were 
milling this stuff out. So, okay. Can't wait to get to the next step. Okay, so I've got my pieces uh, matched up here. And uh, I think that's a good fit. I have a little seam here that I will sand out. But uh, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay. And don't worry about the glue that's in there because I did put down some wood glue um, down here to uh, hold this down flat. So that is going to help keep this stay put. And now I'm going to put this piece on here. Just a piece of leftover. I'll put it right, right on top of that seam. I don't care about this stuff out here. I've already pushed this down. This is going to be okay. I really don't, I don't even need to clamp it down, but I am going to put some weight on it because I want that seam to blend in a little bit better. So there we go. In fact, I should probably take two of these and put up there. Okay, on to the next step. So I'm going to start on the legs now. And uh, I finally came up with a design, kind of a modern industrial look. And I decided to use some uh, metal banding. So um, what I did is I built the jig out of two pieces of three quarter inch ply. Screwed them together. All the edges are identical. Everything's mirror image except the inside here where I did with the jigsaw. Um, I left a good amount of room here so that so it wouldn't flex or warp or anything like that. And I'm not the best at metal work, but um, what I'm going to do is come in here and tack these corners up here. Then I'll pull it free from its jig. And then go over to the welding table and <clears throat> clamp it down. Finish up the welds. She's kind of supposed to only try to give... Oh, Jesus, that's heavy. I'll give you an idea of what that's going to look like. That's going to stand up kind of like... Kind of like that. I think that'll look pretty cool. So, while I'm doing this... Uh... It's kind of cold outside here, so uh, I'm not doing the epoxy work down here in the shop. I'm doing the epoxy work up at the house. And I'll uh, show you how that's coming along. Okay, so there are the legs to the table. And we're going to cut this template down, because now that I'm done using this, I'm going to cut this down to eight and a quarter inches from here to here, which by the time I put my piece of wood in, it will be approximately halfway up the legs, and then we're going to put a shelf, another little like a magazine storage shelf along here. So I think that'll look kind of cool. Clean up all them welds, and prime it and paint it, and then on to the next step. All right, today I'm down here in the shop working on uh, the present, for Brittany's present, her birthday present, and Today's the 6th of November, 2017, and I've got to have this thing done by November 19th. And this is the Art Glow uh, Blue. I forgot exactly what shade of blue they call it. They just, I think it was just a generic blue. And you can get uh, this stuff on Amazon, I think is where I got this. So what I did is I filled in these beautiful marks that the ants left for us. And uh, because this time uh, I used a credit card to slide everything in, to work everything in, um, now I've got to sand the top. Now on the first batch of glow-in-the-dark uh, pigment that I ordered, it was blue but they failed to mention on the website that uh, it's blue when it's glowing at night, but it's sort of an opaque color um, in the daytime. So it's not really clear. There's a little bit of it. Not really clear, uh, but it does not have any color pigment in it. So initially I filled these holes up about 
two thirds of the way with that. And I did not like the effect. I wanted color in here during the day too. So I got this stuff on the internet and uh, it takes a little bit more to charge as far as like putting it out in the sun because the blue color pigments apparently interfere with the glow in the dark pigment that's in there versus the first stuff that I got, kind of the opaque stuff, um, charges in the sunlight faster and actually glows longer. So you can't have it both ways. And if you can, tell me about it, because school me, because I want to know. Okay? I don't even claim to be a professional. Not even close. I'm just showing you guys how I'm doing this. Whether it's right or wrong, you decide, but you could work your own technique out too, right? I mean, because not everybody does their projects the same, especially with this epoxy. There are many professionals out there that are far better than me, but uh, I want to show you kind of like what the average Joe does. Anyway, all right, let's see. What do I have to do next? Next, I've got to finish working up these legs. Got the welding roughed out and everything. So I'll be working on those pretty soon and I'll show you how that goes. I have changed the plan somewhat. I've actually put a piece across here. I'm gonna put a bottom, like a magazine shelf in there. So that might be kind of cool too. Okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna be able to make this in three coats. But I mixed up um, eight ounces of the Pro Marine epoxy, two-step epoxy. This is a 50-50 mix, right? And here is my first coat that I'm gonna have to sand it down. And then uh, we'll throw another coat on it. Okay, I'm just getting ready for the final pour. It looks beautiful, I'm really happy with it. But on the edges here, because this was my first uh, coat or a sealer coat, of epoxy. I've got to come around here and give them a quick sand and get them sanded down like this one here. So what I'm using is wet sandpaper on a credit card. I'm just doing it like that. Okay, then I'll wet this down again and clean that up. Then we're ready for our final pour. Okay, this is the little magazine shelf that goes uh, on the table project here. And I just got through uh, wet sanding my uh, sealer coat of epoxy. Got my countersunk holes in there and everything. I'm gonna put stainless steel hardware in there and mount it. It's gonna look pretty nice. Let's get this done and get this thing together. Okay, so the table is completed. I revealed this to my daughter a little while ago. She she loved it. That's what she says anyway. <laughs> but uh, it's ready for her to take home. And I really enjoyed this project. Epoxy is really fun to work with. Overall, I used a, a gallon of epoxy. Uh, most of it was on the top piece because it was a really thick Pour. I wanted it to have a, a lot of depth to it and I, I have accomplished that. See that? Isn't that pretty? But it rolls right off the edge. I rolled it right off right off the edges so it's kind of an optical illusion but it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah anyway the next one I do won't be so thick. I, I had actually a lot a lot of trim here. I could have brought this down Probably another oh, eighth of an inch or so, and it probably would have still looked pretty good, but hard-headed me, I wanted a thick pour. And then, let's see, and then the bottom, that turned out pretty nice. That's just a piece of birch ply. And uh, let's see, that has three coats of epoxy on it. I put one coat on and spread it around with a credit card. And then, um, 
That was a sealer coat, had light out, a lot of bubbles coming out of this actually. This is really old birch ply. It's been sitting around in the shop for, oh geez, since like the 80s. And um, so it started bubbling up a lot. And um, anyway, I sanded that first sealer coat down and then poured a second coat and it turned out okay. I sanded that down and then poured a third coat and that's that mirror finish. Looks really nice. That's stainless steel hardware down there, by the way. Counter sunk in. And uh, it glows in the dark at night and it's really pretty. Okay, um, thanks for sticking with me and watching this video all the way through. And uh, I've got another epoxy art project I'm doing. I'm going to do another table for my youngest daughter. And uh, hopefully my video skills will get better. We'll see. So anyway, like I say, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Thanks for watching. And I hope this inspires you. I had a lot of fun on this project. Uh, welding, woodwork, and epoxy. Oh man, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay. Uh, please comment below, and uh, all you haters out there, suck it. I'm out.